In my old faith, I was, uh, I was made to understand that having the baptism as a baby, which I never even remember, was a requirement. Kasi pagka daw ang baby hindi na baptized at namatay, what will happen? Baka hindi pumunta na langit, di ba? So it's a requirement. So tonight, we'll talk about um, this uh, topic which is actually um, very knowledgeable to most of you, uh, especially if you've been reading the Bible already. But I think for some of us here, uh, it's still not clear what baptism is. And even from other Christian so-called denominations, sometimes baptism has been mistaken for a requirement. No? So sometimes um, they say that you have to be baptized to be really saved. So we'll uh, clarify everything tonight. Um, but before we proceed, let's, let's pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for once again giving all of us the opportunity to have this free time and attend this class. And most of, uh, most of us here have been um, learning from you these past weeks. We continue to pray that you will guide us through the Holy Spirit, that we will understand everything we, we will hear and read tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for you are in control of our lives. And uh, for those of us here who are struggling and having challenges and having problems in life, Lord, take care of their concerns. We know that you will just bless them, Lord, as they attend this class. And um, Lord, do not make them worry. Just uh, remind them that you are the Lord of our lives. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so just like what I said, baptism could be misunderstood as um, infant baptism. So um, again, let me ask the, the class. How many have been baptized this way? Through 100%. Before, no, before. Um, and basically, uh, that is done with a set of godparents, no? and then there's a ministering uh, priest or pastor who will what? Sprinkle. So the, the baby will cry and then there will be a celebration handaan after. That is what I um, came to know when I was growing up uh, in my former religion. I understood baptism as an infant baptism. But, uh, you know, when, when one becomes a, a believer uh, from a biblical perspective, one becomes a Christian, or as we say, pag naborn again na tayo, there will be some changes that will happen in us, and most of these changes are still internal. No? Um, you, you, don't, you don't even realize it, but your, your personality has already started to change. And people will start to notice some fruits, maybe they're small fruits, but they're changes that are happening. And then one step of obedience that God requires all of us, as you are a believer now, you are now required to do something, a simple step of uh, obedience to a requirement that God would like us to do. Um, in fact, the word following Christ, no? Following as we will define later on. No? Um, before we go to that word following, where do you find this verse, go and make disciples of all nations? Matthew, yeah, you've already, I think, memorized that already because you have been asked over and over and over by, I think, our pastor Peter was, is always repetitive in asking, what is the main verb in this? Is it the go or is it the make? No, talagang as you go, you can make disciples, means you share the word of God, share the gospel to those who haven't heard it yet. So that's right. It's in Matthew 28, verse 19. It says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing, there's the word baptizing, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, the disciple word, okay, I, I place there um, a silhouette. What do you see there? A silhouette of a person holding a what? Okay, it's a, it's a person with a dog beside. You know, because the word disciple is actually this meaning, no? It's a, a person who is a learner or a follower. Um, that reminded me of a pet owner such as this in the, in the picture with a dog on a leash. And the purpose of that is to train and the dog would follow because there would be what? Lessons that the dog will see. So, if, if you're a follower of Christ, going back to you, 
the question to ask tonight is, are you a follower 100% most of the time? Or are you a follower, sometimes not a follower? Okay. In reality, are you following 100%? Or sometimes we don't? If you're like me, a normal believer, sometimes I don't follow. Okay? Because there are so many things in my mind, some questions that I don't still understand when I was growing up early in the faith. But as I understood lesson after, lesson after lesson attending classes like this, I started to understand and that's why I started to trust God's word and follow. They say that if you're a good follower, you should look like the one you're following, diba? Right? So if you're really following God or following Christ, in all His commands, you should look like or at least act like Christ. Yes? So I found this um, amazing because they say that if the dog is always with the amo or the master, the dog would look like the amo. Have you seen actual pictures like that? Okay, just to wake you up tonight, kita mo magkamukha na sila. Okay, can you see that? May Sharpe na katabi and that guy looks like a Sharpe already. Okay, we don't know who's following whom. But I guess this is a good connection. No? If you're a follower of Christ, you should look like Christ, just like this picture. Another one is like this guy with long hair. Okay, but you know the best photo I got from the internet was really the best follower that I've seen, and that is this guy, okay? The dog looks like the person already, okay? Exacto, exacto. So, a disciple, can you tell the one beside you, you are a follower, okay? Now, the question is, who are you following, okay? Kasi mamaya, ibang sinusundan eh. Now, let me show you how the first followers of our Lord Jesus Christ came to be. In Matthew 4.18, it says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers named Simon, and Co Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. So this is the mention of the first followers of Jesus Christ who later became the apostles. Yeah? The start of choosing the apostles. And... If you continue the verses, it says there, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you what? I'll make you, Mangingisda kayo ng mga tao, fishers of men. And what happened? Did they pray about it or sleep, about, sleep over it? Did they delay it? It says there, at once, when Christ gave the invitation to these two brothers, at once, Simon and Andrew, they left their nets and followed whom? Followed Christ. They started to follow Him right at that very moment. So the question again to all of us, are we following Christ? As we learn about His demands from us, as you read the Word, as you see more and more about His character, are you obeying Him? And tonight, we're going to talk about a very important commandment that He gave us. And every believer should be aware of this kind of activity, which is baptism. Now, first time the Christians, the disciples were called Christians. Can you guess where? What place was that? Yeah, I heard it. No, it's a place called Antioch. For a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So disciples, Christians, followers are all synonymous. Okay? So when you say disciple, follower, Christians, pare pareho po meaning non. So the question again is, are you a Christian in your actions, in your words, and even your obedience to the Word of God? Which brings us to number one. Following Christ, if you're a good follower, it requires obedience to Him. John 14, 15 says, can you read together with me? If you love me, continue. You will obey my command. So, when we follow Christ, it says there, you are showing Him that you love Him. So, vice versa, if you don't follow Christ, we don't show Him our love. Now, that's sad because Christ loved us first. Did you know that even your understanding the Bible was only by grace? It's not because we're intelligent or because we're, we're 
educated enough to understand the Word of God, it's because of God's grace. Can someone define grace again? Ano ba ang grace? It is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but we still receive it. So if you have received salvation, when you understood the gospel, everything is by God's grace. There is nothing from us that we can boast about. So, if you love Him, you will obey what Jesus commands. All God requires is what? It says there, simple obedience. Okay? Some would just try to, to manipulate their way out of the Bible and say, instead of doing this, maybe what, what, why should I do that? I'll do this other thing. In other words, some people would like to sacrifice rather than obey the Word of God. So, but what, the, what does the Bible say? Okay? It says here, to obey is better than sacrifice. So, if you're trying to, to haggle your way out of God's commandments, it says here, which is found in 1 Samuel 15, obedience to God's word or to, to Christ's commands is better than sacrifice. Luke 14, 26. Okay, can I um, ask for your encouragement and read together? If anyone comes to me, his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. You know who's speaking here? It's Jesus saying, you have to love God and you have to love Him. Okay? In comparison to your family, to your parents, to your siblings or brothers and sisters, even to your own life, you should love Him at the topmost priority. Now, think about that. When I first saw this, I was scared because, you know, our default is we love our lives, diba? Right? We love ourselves. We love our safety. We love our possession. We love our, even our possessions. And sometimes there would be some commandments that would tell you to give up certain things. But you know what God is saying? You have to love God. You have to love Christ above all. And that brings us to number two. Following Christ must be what? Our first priority. It should always be clear in our minds that you have to put Christ as number one above all. To the point that you hate your own life. That is what it means. Following Him means you have to prioritize Him no matter what cost. So priority is the word and you should understand that very clearly. Let's go to number three. Following Christ entails what? Okay? You see the word sacrifice. Gusto nyo ba yung sacrifice? Eh, ayoko ng word na yun. Sacrificio na naman. Ang hirap na mabuhay sa Pilipinas. Sacrificio ng buhay natin. Being a Christian is easy. Sacrificio na naman. But it says there, if you follow Christ, it should entail what? Self-sacrifice. What do I mean? Look at Luke 14, 27. Again, this is very clear that anyone who does not carry his or her cross and follow me, that's Jesus, cannot be his disciple. See how the requirements are getting more and more stricter? If you want to be a true disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ, it says there you have to carry your cross. And I'd like to show you this image of this cross. And cross entails what? Is it an easy path or is it a hard path? It's a hard life. Hard for many of us, but I think once you understand your priority in life, you will make your life easier as we obey. It actually will bless you if you start to trust and obey because obeying Him will actually give us more blessings. One of them is peace in our hearts. Let's go to number four. Following Christ requires willingness to pay the cost. I remember this um, brother of ours from CCF, no, from our church. Um, when he gave his testimony, it was a perfect example of this person knew the cost of following Christ. He was supposed to inherit a lot of um, things from his father. But when his father heard that he became a born-again Christian from CCF, you know what happened to him? He was disowned. And he was actually thrown out of the house. 
And that's what happened to him. And you know, when he was giving his testimony, he was even smiling to the audience. And I was looking at him and I thought this was strange because this person gave up a lot of money and potential inheritance just because he became a Christian. So it says there, you have to pay the cost. That's the question to you. Are you willing to pay the cost if you really want to follow our Savior? Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? Now, what, what, are this, what is this verse saying? If you really want to start your life as a believer, you have to make sure that you have enough what, resources to carry you through. I've seen many Christians who start very, very excited about being a CCFer. They go to retreats, they attend GLC, etc., etc. And when persecution started, what happened? They started to, to stop coming. I've seen some who, because of um, problems in finances or even relationships, they just quit. They, they did not realize that there is something that would cost, okay? Um, they're being a Christian. So, it says there, try to think before you even make a decision in this baptism. Because baptism uh, means commitment. This is um, something that has been clarified over and over to us here in church. You have to know what you're getting into. Okay? Because if you don't know what you're getting into, you might not end up finishing your project, and that is your life. Sometimes the Bible talks about our life as like a house. If you start on the foundation, okay, better be sure that you can finish up to the roof. Because you know why? What happens? If, you, if people see that you don't finish the house, what will they say? Pwede ba tayong pagtawanan? Pwede ba tayong kutsain na ganyan ba talaga ang mga Kristiyano, hindi natatapos? And that can happen because some people don't know that if you become a believer, you have some cost to pay. Let's go to number two point. Water baptism as a step of, obe of obedience. Why do we go through this? Because number one, Jesus modeled ba water baptism as a step of obedience to his Father. And uh, let me show you some verses to prove that. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. I placed some asterisks there. And if you notice, there's an asterisk on the word Jesus, on the word Holy Spirit, and on the word voice. What do you see there? At that time when Christ decided to model baptism for us to follow, you know, there was a, a sign of approval from heaven. And uh, this is actually the presence of the triunity. The word trinity is not even found in the Bible. And that's what other religions are, are saying. You, you know, Christiano, they invent words. Wala namang word trinity dyan eh. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. You know what? There is no word suicide in the Bible. So, can I say because there is no suicide word in the Bible, so suicide doesn't exist? Whereas, in fact, there was one person who committed suicide. You know that. Who was that? Diba si Judas nag-suicide, but there was no word suicide. So, when people say, walang well, Trinity because there's no word, just remember, Trinity is present okay, with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, as a triunity. So as you can see, the modeling of Christ for us to follow is He Himself was baptized by His first cousin, diba? Si John the Baptist. Now, even the early believers also took this step of obedience. So if they followed Christ in the early century, shouldn't we also follow? So it says here, in Acts 2, 41, those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So those people were saved. And it says there, those who accepted. So number one, you should, you should also 
understand that you accept everything that you see and hear and read in the Bible. Wag po kayo yung mga Christianong, uh, I call them the turu-turu Christians, yung they would accept this verse but not this verse. You accept everything 100%. So if you are going to follow Christ, first you accept the message, and that is the gospel, and then baptism can be done after that. When they believed, Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So let's focus on those words when they believe. So when they accepted the word, first, in your mind, you should believe that this is God's word and this is true. So believe is followed by baptism. So it has to be someone, at least at the level of understanding, if you understand what you believe in, then you can be baptized. The question is, when you do infant baptism, do they understand anything at that age? Walang naintindihan yun eh. In fact, they just know how to cry. So, if you don't understand what you're doing, baptism won't even mean anything. But the true baptism that I'm going to talk about tonight is there should be an understanding. There should be belief. Another word for that word belief is trust. You have to trust God. And then that's when you do baptism. Let's go to point number three. Why should we be baptized in water? Okay, in water. Why shouldn't it be like the infants that are just sprinkled? Okay, we need wisik wisik lang. Bakit kailangan in water? Which is explained by number one. It is part of our what? Our obedience to Christ as His disciples because He did it in water. Matthew 28 again says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So it is our obedience to Christ. That's why we do it in water. Number two, it is a sign of our commitment to follow Christ. What is that commitment word about? It is now asking all of us, are you now committing yourself to our Savior? And He wants commitment. He wants our total commitment to follow Him, whatever the cost. If it means losing a relationship, because when I became a Christian, I lost some of my relationships from my, old, from my old friends because they were not doing what I wanted to do. They were doing other things. So I lost some friendships. I also lost some activities because I gave up some of my vices. When I committed my life to the Lord, I stopped all my bisho. I, I was a drinker. I was a smoker. I even smoked um, weed. You know what weed is? And I did all of those things that are normal, normal to men. But you know, when I became a Christian, I gave, I gave up all of those things because I had to, to tell God that I am committed to you no matter what. It may also mean that you would lose sometimes your job. I remember one Christian who, whose job was to sell um, beer to juvenile customers because that was his main objective. His boss told him, you have to sell this number of beer bottles per night and your target will be from the 12-year-old up to the 19-year-old. And he became a Christian, so you know what he did? He, he prayed. Sabi niya, Lord, is this glorifying to you if I continue selling liquor and beer? To young people, and it cost him his decision to quit his job. And is that scary to lose a job? Actually, he didn't lose the job, he quit without even realizing that there was no money next month, but he trusted God. And you know what God did? God gave him another job, which was more glorifying. And that's what I mean by commitment. If you're going to commit tonight, to decide on this baptism, you have to realize that there should be realization that there is a cost. That there is something that you may have to sacrifice before you even do it. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. 
So why do it in water? Okay? What do you see here? I'll give you a few moments to observe that person. Anong ginagawa? Hindi po nililibing, ha? Baka nililibing. Sa... Kita nyo, tubig yan, ha? Tubig. It's a small cartoon that moves, but I'd like to show you, okay, um, a sample of a baptism activity, which is the right baptism. It is a picture of what happened to us when we were saved. That's why we do it in water. Okay? What do I mean? You see that, that person there? Okay? Above water and then he gets immersed underwater. May nakikita ba kayong naiiwan sa labas? Wala, no? And then he gets out. Okay? Sabi nila, it depends on how much sins you have. If you have much sins, matagal ka sa ilalim. Pag maliit lang ang sin mo, siguro five seconds lang. Um, I also remember this joke. There was this guy who, who was getting baptized. Okay, Kristiyano na raw siya. Pero he didn't want to tithe. Ayaw niyang magbigay na ikaw po. So when he was baptized, nakataas yung wallet niya. Nasa labas. So Lord, wag yung wallet ko ha. Yung buong katawan except my wallet. And what is this a picture about? It's a picture of a person who gets saved. Okay? So, if you are saved and you're sure about that, this is what happened to you. If you're going to be baptized, you're going to actually symbolize many things. It's a spiritual symbolism which means you are now dead to your old self. When you hear those words, you die to yourself, okay? You don't really die literally, but you are now a dead person when it comes to your old life or lifestyle. Just like when I was drinking and smoking, womanizing and everything, I am now dead whenever they, my friends invite me. So sin is knocking at the door. And mind you, temptation never stops. Once you become a believer, it doesn't mean you won't anymore struggle. In fact, the temptation became even stronger. I had more temptations when I became a believer, and I was aware of sin so much, but they kept on knocking at the door of my life, and they tempted me day in and day out. So when they knock, you know, they called me, Jay, are you still there? The old Jay. You know what I answer? The, the old Jay is dead because it's now a new Jay. When I get immersed in water, what happens? It's like burying, okay? It's barely burying your old life. Nilibing ko na yung dating Jay. So pagpatay na, wag mo nang buhayin. Okay? Hindi na dapat buhayin yun. Okay? You are now buried, meaning, as you identify with Christ dying, your old self has died already, and you're buried. Now, when you rise up, okay, so that's why you have to be in the water, and you get out of the water as you rise up, you are resurrecting to your new self. That is the symbolic meaning of that. So when you get out of that water level, you are now the new person. So is that clear? It's a symbolic meaning which is applied to all believers. When you decide to do baptism, you are now dead to your old life. You buried your life actually. And then when you immerse out of that water, you are now a new person. Let me show you some verses. In Christ, we are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, the good news. Anyone who is joined to Christ is a... It says there, you are a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. Another version says, anyone who belongs to Christ is a new person. The past is forgotten and everything is already new. So, are you a new person? Even though you still look the same? But inside, okay, you have new tastes, you have new activities. You have new, what, lifestyles that you are now manifesting. So when people start to notice changes in you and me, that is the new person. And I pray that you will all be in this person, the new person that God has designed you to be. Now let's talk about baptism more. What ba water baptism is. It is not a means to salvation, just like the requirements of infants. To be saved, infants have to be baptized. But in the Bible, it says there, it is not a means, but a declaration of our salvation. 
A declaration is something like this letter. No, declare mo siya. And it's a public declaration. It's a public declaration of something that happened inside of us. And when you say you have to declare that, I came to this, um, this caricature which really shows us what declaration is all about. This guy okay, is ringing a bell and then reading something. I'm sure all of you know this, diba? Yung sa England, merong, hear ye, hear ye. He is declaring something in public. And that means you are now telling the world, okay, in front of God as your witness, in front of your friends, even your Christian group, your D group, in front of everyone, that you are now committing your life, you are now aware of the consequences of being committed, and you are now prioritizing God most of all. You're declaring something in public. So, again, I'd like it to show you this equation. When you place your faith in Christ, you are saved, period. You don't even have to add anything. So, that nothing is what most religions are filling up. Some religions would say you have to be part of this church as a member. Some religions would say you have to be baptized or you have to do this or to do that get the sacraments, etc., etc., to be saved. But in our, in our Bible, it says there, you are saved by faith alone. Period. So that's when you get saved. And most Christians would say, and dali-dali naman pala. You know, I, I'm sad when I hear that because I said that too before. Madali nga sa atin, pero was it easy for God the Father to sacrifice His Son and die in our place? It wasn't easy for the Father. Someone still paid for our salvation. It's free for us because it's by grace, but someone still paid for it. So after getting saved by faith, then you do your baptism. So baptism is an what? An outward expression of being saved. Okay? So hindi po pwede mabaptize ang hindi naintindihan ang gospel. So there's the equation. Faith in Christ plus nothing equals salvation, and then you do your Baptism as a sign of obedience. All the good works that you have to do is a sign of obedience as a byproduct of being saved. So, which brings us to this. It is a willful choice on the part of the person. Wala po itong pilitan. Wala po itong pressure from anyone. Don't be forced into being baptized. I remember in one of our early encounters, um, back in the 90s, that was a long time ago, we were given this lesson on baptism. And there was this brother of mine who's also a doctor. And, you know, when all of us were asked, would you like to be baptized? All of us, 99%, except my brother, all of us went to, to be baptized. But he stayed inside the auditorium for the whole length of time. And he was really sure he doesn't want to be baptized. And, you know, I admired him for being so firm in his, in his decision because he never understood what a Christian is. And he was still in his religion, and I, we respected that. And you know what? Um, we just let him be. So I said, okay, just stay there. But I could see his face. It was really struggling. But I guess it's better that way. So walang kunyari andito, walang trying to impress other people just to show you that you are baptized. When you make a decision for baptism, and we will give you that opportunity, you have to be sure that you really want to be baptized. So it's a person with a choice. It's either a yes, Lord, or maybe, Lord, later, or a no. Um, what happened to that brother of mine? He's now a believer. Many years later, he texted me. Yeah, Jay, I just got baptized. And that's when he understood his salvation very clearly. It is a public declaration of the believer's identification with Christ in his death and his resurrection. As you have seen in that small cartoon, you identify with Christ. When he died on the cross, you died to yourself. When he was buried in the cave, you were buried okay, with him. Your old life was buried with him. And then when he resurrected after the third day, you resurrect as a new person. And that's the new Christian in you. It is by immersion in water. 
It is never by sprinkling. It is never by any other method. It is by immersion. You know, the, the original word for baptism, the English word baptism, comes from this Greek um, baptizo. Okay? And, uh, you know, this word baptizo um, came from another root word, bapto, which means to wash. It's like this picture of pickles. You know, pickles are washed, okay? Okay, more pickles. And then when, when they use the word baptism or baptizo during the time of the second century, they used this many times in the kitchen, and they were being just truthful to the word. Baptizo is actually putting pickles under vinegar. So they dip and immerse all the pickles, and that is the first historical fact of doing pickles. So cucumbers, yeah. cucumbers were placed under vinegar. And that's the word they use, baptizo, for pickling. That's why when a person is baptized, hindi po pwedeng magilamos. Okay? Kailangan nasa ilalim. You have to be under the water. So it is, by definition, immersion. So baptizo is, uh, that's how it's pronounced, baptizo. It's defined as to dip regularly or immerse wholly in liquid in order to effect a permanent change. So we are now symbolically but declaring in public that we are now a new person once you do baptism.